All right, all right, all right, all right. This is November 2021. We are sitting November 16th. It's a Tuesday. I've got about 13 or so associates on, all excited to learn about how to run quotes, how to submit applications for a brand new agent who does not have writing numbers, okay? The training I'm gonna give you today, if you're a builder, it's imperative that you learn this because this is how your downlines can go from contracting to application submission to receiving commissions in the fastest manner possible. If you're a brand new agent and you've turned in your contracting paperwork, this is, this is for you to be able to turn in business. The biggest thing that I first wanna to explain to you is this, when you're in the independent world, Outside of the state of Pennsylvania, I apologize, Pennsylvania, that's not my fault. That's the state of Pennsylvania that made the rules. When you're brand new, when, when you're in the independent world, as long as you've turned in your contracting paperwork to the FMO that you're hanging your licenses with, as long as you've turned in your paperwork, okay, you are what's called an agent under JIT status, just in time status. That means that our licensing team has reviewed your paperwork. That paperwork has your AML, has your errors and emissions. You know, it has all the, the background questions. It has the signature, it has everything, a state, your state, it has everything. It's basically the packet is ready to go, but we have not turned it into the carrier. So because we have not turned it into the carrier, you don't have a writing number, okay? In the independent world, you can still submit business without having a writing number. You can. Every single state except Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the only state that requires you to have a writing number first. You don't have the ability to turn in business without a writing number, okay? Every other state, however, you can, okay? Now, because now I've given you that information, if I'm a brand new agent, I'm thinking to myself, okay, let me turn in my contracting paperwork. Let me turn in all the things that I need to make sure that all the carriers I wanna sell, I'm in JIT status. And then let me sit in this orientation right here, so that I could learn how to run quotes and submit applications with these companies without having a writing number. And you might be thinking to yourself, if you're an experienced agent, like, wait a minute, if I don't have a writing number, I don't have the ability to log into the carrier website. If I can't log into the carrier website, I can't run quotes. And if I can't run quotes, I can't submit applications. What are you talking about? I'm gonna show you how today there's, there's third-party websites where you can run quotes and third-party websites where you can still submit applications without having a writing number. That's what I'm gonna teach you how to do. If the other question you might have is, well, Tony, why don't you just submit all the, all the contracting paperwork for everybody all at once? Like, like maybe my old company did, right? You, maybe you came from an organization that did that. Okay, that was probably a multi, multi-million dollar mammoth of an operation, right? Unfortunately, TKO is not there yet, we're gonna get there. But the reason why I'll tell you, just being fully transparent, it costs $60 to $100 for every contract that we turn in per company. And then on top of that, in the independent world, okay, if you don't write business within 90 days of having that writing number, you lose that writing number. So not only does, does TKO as an FMO pay for those, for those contracts to come through, but if you don't actually use it, you lose it. You lose that writing number. And then, and then all of a sudden, when you have business to write, you, you got to go through contracting all over again. Eh, it's probably not the path that you want to go. So by being in JIT status, that means, hey, I know that I have other places where I can run quotes. I have other places where I can submit application. I'd rather submit my contracting alongside my first application at the same time. So I don't got to worry about losing that code once I get that writing number. Does that make sense? Or does anybody have any questions about that? Everybody's good, everybody's good? Okay, good, cool. Um, let me give you this disclosure as well before I share my screen because I'm having, I, I've had this happen in the past and I wanna make sure that I'm very transparent if you're watching this. If you're a brand new agent, okay, you're expected to work with a field trainer, okay? Running this business is a lot more than just, I know how to submit applications, I know how to run quotes. No, if you don't know how to underwrite, if you don't know what certain acronyms mean when you underwrite, if you don't know how to communicate with an underwriter, if you don't know what things you need to do as an agent versus the things that the, that the, that the underwriter needs to do on their own, if you're that person, you should be working with a field trainer, okay? I just, I really want you to understand something. You're not respecting your upline's time 
If you're trying to submit business by yourself, but then you're going to text message them 50 times a day. Hey, what does this mean? Hey, what does that mean? Hey, what is this? Hey, what is that? I don't know. I didn't know I needed to do this. I thought they did this already. If you don't know that part of the business, my advice to you is work with a certified field trainer. Be willing to split commissions with that certified field trainer if that's how that VP operation is operating. And if, if, if you're going to not go that path and you want to do it on your own, then you got to be willing to learn it on your own. And I know that's a little bit of tough love, but you got to be willing to learn it on your own. Because here's another thing I want to tell you. Sandra is not that resource for how do I underwrite. Sandra helps you with licensing and contracting. Sandra, you know, could run once a week an underwriting class, a how-to class and stuff like that. But Sandra's not the person you're going to be text messaging 50 times. Hey, what does this mean? Hey, what does that mean? Hey, how do I get this? Hey, how do I get that? When I start to see that pattern start to happen with an agent, my first question is, why aren't they working with a certified field trainer? Because here's my biggest fear. Not only do you have questions about underwriting, I have no idea what you designed. And maybe what you designed is not in the best of interest of the client. And maybe what you designed could put you in future, future legal problems if you designed it incorrectly. In maybe you're not doing the right thing for the client, not because you mean to do harm, but because you really just, you still need to be working with a certified field trainer. My advice is work, you know, work five to 10 cases with a certified field trainer. When I first got into this business, I, I was required, guys. I came from a career agency model. My first year, there wasn't a single piece of business I could turn in by myself. I turned in 105 applications, 105, not I'm lying, I issued 105, I turned in 120 something. I issued 105 pieces of business my first year. There wasn't a single piece of business I did by myself. There wasn't one. I worked with somebody all the way through. And that one year that I split 50% of every bit, every little bit that I did, I guarantee you it paid me back 100x because it's brought me to where I am today. It's given me the education that I've earned today. So if you're someone that you're like, no, 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 I'm going to do it on my own. Well, then you've got to be willing to do it on your own from A to Z. You can't just say, I'm going to do it on my own for the application, for the illustration. But then while it's in underwriting, I'm going to call 50, 60, 70 times disrespect my uplines time, disrespect my administrative team's time. They're going to they're, they're gonna stop everything they're doing to help me because I don't know how to do it. It doesn't work that way. It just quite frankly doesn't work that way. And, and if your own uplines don't have the ability to give you this direct conversation, just understand I'm telling this to you from a place of love, but I'm also telling you this because I respect a field trainer's time. I respect their time. And so because I respect somebody's time, I'm not going to have them working for free. I'm not going to have them stopping what they're doing to answer the questions that I'm, I'm unwilling to bring someone in to help me learn how to do. Okay. I just got that off my chest. Ah, I said it. It feels good. It's being recorded. I'm going to send this message to all kinds of people. But anyways, let's get this bad boy started over here. I promise you builders, builders, are saying to themselves right now, I'm so glad you just said that, Tony, because I didn't want to have that conversation, but I'm glad somebody did. I promise you they did. All right, let's get this bad boy started here. Let me share my screen. We're going to go company by company. Here's the good news. I put together this little cheat sheet here, and I'm going to put it into PDF fashion, and I'm going to upload it into our documents and resources so you guys can print it out and use it, okay? Um, but, but what I did, I mean, I literally just went company by company, the primary companies, not every company, but the primary companies to show you how you can run quotes and submit applications without having a writing number, right? So let's go step by step. The biggest things you need to know is this. Everything starts and ends with this website right here, tkofinancialnetwork.com. You had to have created an account. It was one of the first things you had to do when you did contracting, okay? You had to have. So you already have login credentials. Everything starts and ends with that, okay? In these instructions, when you see parentheses around certain words, those parentheses represent a tab that you need to look for inside of that website, right? So let's talk first North American. North American is a prime company that we use. I mean, it is a big company that we use. It is a term insurance company. It is a GUL company. It is an IUL company, okay? North American is the only company out of every company here that you can actually run IULs and not have a writing number and get a full-fledged IUL illustration, right? Because other companies like National Life Group, other companies like um, Allianz, other companies like Anico, the only way you can run quotes, illustrations is either by having a writing number, which means you have to wait for that contracting, right? Or 
by contacting our back office sales team. The person that runs that department, his name is John Countryman. Okay, now I'll show you his number here momentarily. You call John and ask John to email you an illustration for you, or you call your upline and have them email you an illustration, right? North America is the only one that you can actually run full-fledged IULs. So if I'm a brand new agent and I'm in the IUL game and I just came on board TKO, I'm probably going to sell North American first because I know I can do my own illustrations. Here's how you do it, right? Number one, you first start off at our TKO website, right? What you're going to do is you're going to scroll down here to our IMO. Our IMO is going to show you these two options, our IMO and the about. You're going to click our IMO again here. It's going to forward you to the call UMS portal. This is a very familiar portal because you use this portal for contracting. You're going to log in. When you log in, you hit agent portal and you're going to go to e-app services, e-app services. It's going to take you right here. Everybody knows this. If you're in the industry, you know what iGo is, right? You're going to hit this try it now button and it's going to forward you to iGo. Now, if this is the first time you're in iPipeline or iGo, right? Some people call it one way or the other, it's the same company. But you know, not if this is the first time you're here using the call UMS back office, you're gonna have to create an account. You're gonna have to create an account. It's pretty instant. They send you an email confirmation, you verify it, and boom, instantly you have access to it. These are my credentials. I log in. Now I'm in a very familiar page that a lot of people have seen before. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to hit start new case. You're going to put in the client's credentials. Let's say I'm meeting with a guy named Pedro Perez. His date of birth is 10, 23, uh, 1984, whatever. He's 37 years old. It's a it's a male. I'm going to title it. Right. I tend to title things by their last name, first name, the company initials, North American, and then what it is that I want to sell. Let's say this is a term policy. Okay. I'm going to select the state. This is a Florida client. I'm going to select the product, right? If it's a term product, I'm going to go right here to term. If it's an IUL, I'm going to index universal life, right? If it's a GUL, I'm going to go to universal life, right? If it's a whole life, I'm going to go to there, right? It's a term. So I go here and then I hit this available products button. What's going to happen is iGo is going to show you every company that uses iGo as their application submission portal, right? Now, notice there's two columns here. You have quotes and illustrations and you have iGo app. Notice the only one with two buttons is North American. Everybody else only has one button. This button here to the right is the e-app button. This is the button you select to actually take the application. This button here to the left is what you use to run quotes. North American is the only company you can actually use iPipeline to run quotes, full quotes, full, 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 full blown quotes, right? So let's just say this was an IUL. Let's change the product here. Let's go into index universal life, find available products. Now I'm seeing IUL companies. Guess what? North American is even there. So that comment that I just made, North American is the only company without a writing number you can run full-fledged IULs is because North American is the only company that also uses iPipeline as their application, um, not their application, their quoting software as well, right? So the Business Builder 3 is the IUL that we're currently using, okay? If you click this button to the left, it takes you to the quotes software, this button to the right takes you to the app software. The business builder three is the accumulator plan. The protector builder is the IUL that's more focused on, on living benefits and death benefit, not so much on cash accumulation, okay? These are the two that I typically look at, but the one I'm writing the most of is this one for cash accumulation, the business builder three. So I hit select right here. Here's what it does. It takes me to their quoting software. Ready? It's popping up. Give it some time. There it is. Right? There's my table rating. You know, do I need to do flat extras? Uh, you know, am I solving for death benefit or face value? Here's my death benefit, my, my options increasing level, my payments, you know, my specific, am I paying annually, quarterly, whatever? You know, what interest rates am I running? 
everything, my target, my calculator, and boom, I can view the illustration. This training is not about how to run illustrations. It's just showing you where to go. So as a new agent, I just want you to know this will give you the full ability to run quotes. And you can pick IUL. You can switch it and pick term life. Here's your term quotes. That's actually an error occurred. Let me, let me see here. Let's try that again. Error occurred. Come on, man. wake up. Wake up, wake up. Let me try it. Let me go into it again here. Let me try now. Start new case. Let's run a term. Just for so you guys can see a sample, sample. Uh, same thing, 10, 23, 1984, that's fine. A male, right? Sample, North American term. Whatever, this is a Florida case. Let's go to term, find available products. There it is. North American, their term product that I use is the Advantage Gen 9 because it has the full living benefits. That's what you're looking for, hit select. There's a term quote illustration. And let's actually run the quote. Let's do a preferred plan. Let's do 500,000 clients making payments monthly, EFT. You know, I can add writers right here if I want to. You know, maybe I wanna add a child's writer. 25,000 for, what is it? Let me do it until, until turn six to, 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 to age 25, okay. Let me see here, enter the number of years. Well, let's say, let's say my kid is 10 years old, so I wanna cover him for eight years. So he's 18. Then here's what I could do. Let's view the illustration. If it's your first time doing it, sometimes the pop-up blocker is on, so you just gotta make sure you allow. And then boom, there's my quote. It's a full-fledged professional quote. Talks about the living benefits, talks about the prices, the face value. I mean, you can email this, you can, you know, you can save this, you can show this on an iPad, you can, you know, whatever you want, but you can, you got the full illustration right here. When you're done with the illustration, you can go right here to go to eApp and it'll take all the information from the application, from the illustration, it'll push it to the eApp and it'll actually begin an electronic application. And, and, and here we go, here we go, there it is. It pushes all the information. Boom, I'm in application mode. For those of you that have submitted business with iPipeline before, doesn't that look pretty familiar? Right? Yes, this is new business. Let's go to the next. And then you'll see a bunch of things pop up over here, which is all the individual pages. And then your job is to what? Fill in the blanks. Once you're done filling in all the information and you got green check marks all the way across the board here, meaning every page was filled out correctly, you can fully submit. What are you filling out? All the stuff that's yellow. All the stuff that's yellow is mandatory, right? Now, the big question is people have is, well, wait a minute, what about my writing number? What do I write? when I get to the writing number section, what you're gonna do, and this is something you need to remember as a brand new agent without writing numbers, you need to remember this for almost every company, every, every company, what I'm about to tell you right now. When you write writing number, you're gonna either write the word pending or you're gonna put straight zeros across the board. Some, some carriers let you write pending, some carriers are straight zeros, either or just find a way to fill in that section because the application won't let you go to the next um, phase without having something written in there. That's number one. Second thing you need to do is you need to make sure that when you submit the business, you go back to the TKO website, you go in and you hit this button right here, support center, carrier contracting requests. If you know that you're going to write a company, you're going to write it and you want our licensing team to begin the contracting process, meaning take the application from JIT and send it to the company. Let me get a writing number. Whether you submitted the business or you haven't, if you know you want the writing number, you go right here to carrier contracting requests. You fill out the information. Now, again, we won't typically push your contracts forward 
until we know you have an application either that you've submitted with iPipeline or if you know for sure that you're about to turn in the application the next day or two. So if you're someone that says to me, hey, Tony, listen, um, I want to sell Allianz, right? Allianz, just so you know, is not on iPipeline. So you can't submit an application on iPipeline with Allianz. You got, with Allianz, you either have to do a paper app or an electronic app after you get a writing number. If you're the, if you're the agent that says to me, hey, I want to turn in Allianz, I know I'm going to, but I don't want to do a paper application first. I want the writing numbers. I'm, I'm, my client and I are willing to wait till we get a writing number so we can log in directly to the Allianz website. You're going to fill out this information anyways. You're still going to fill this out. If you did go to iPipeline, like a North American case, and you don't have a writing number and you wrote pending, you still got to fill this out. This lets my licensing team know, hey, there's an agent that needs a writing number for a particular company. Does that make sense? Right? So step, so, so step one, you write either writing, either you write pending or zeros for the writing number info on the application. Step two, you request contracting. Step two. Step three, and you need to do step three with every single application you do from now until the last day you're here with TKO, you need to go to new business transmittal and you need to fill out a digital transmittal form. If it's life insurance, here's life. If it's annuity, here's an annuity. If it's another product like an e-commerce sale, it's here's other products. So if it's life, you go right here, you fill out this digital form. My commissions department needs, we absolutely utterly need you to fill this form out. If you want to make sure that you're, you get overrides in a timely manner, commissions in a timely manner. Remember, in the independent world, you're direct to carrier with a lot of companies. So this is the only way as an FMO, we receive the data that you have business in underwriting prior to the actual commissions paying out. But if the commissions pay out and we don't have a transmittal report to, to checks and balances, it, it could delay your commissions. Okay, so if I'm a brand new agent and I just did North American, I know my steps. I go to submit, right? I go, I pipeline to, to run the quotes and submit the applications. Then I need to make sure I go and do a new business transmittal. And then I need to make sure that I do a carrier contracting request. Here's what's great. I walked you through it, but now I typed up all the steps right here for North American. Once you get a writing number from North American, you can log right into North American's website. You can run your quotes there. You can submit your applications there. You already have your writing number. You know, you still will always need to do the new business transmittal, but all of these extra steps here, they, they become irrelevant to you because now you have a writing number. This is for that first piece of business. Any questions before I move to the next company? Everybody's good? Okay, cool. Foresters. Foresters, you're going to use either for final expense or for term insurance, whether it's express or fully underwritten. What you do for Foresters is very simple. Let me close out some of these here. Again, everything starts and ends with our website. You're going to go right here to mobile quick quotes. Notice how many companies you can actually run quotes with just using this website. There's Oxford final expense, there's SBLI term and final expense, there's guaranteed issue with Great Western, there's Mutual of Omaha final expense term and GUL, there's Mutual of Omaha children's whole life, there's Foresters, right, final expense and term, North American, American national GUL and term, Anico, I'm sorry, Americo is a final expense term, Anico is GUL and term, Oxford's, I mean, look on all the websites there are. Right? These are all third-party websites you can run quotes with. I'm going to go to Foresters for this. So with Foresters, the ones I use a lot of is PlanRight or Your Term. PlanRight is final expense. Your Term is their term product. Okay? Something you need to know about Foresters. If you're submitting a PlanRight application, a final expense app, either you have to use a paper application for your first piece of business, or you have to request the contracts to get pushed forward so that when you get a writing number, you can log directly into Foresters and submit your e-app that way. For term, however, for term, you can run your quotes here. There it is, there's your quotes. Put in all your parameters. You can hit get quote. 
There's your quote. Here is a pretty cool thing. You can email the quote to yourself. You can email it, email the quote, boom, it gets sent. I recommend you email it to yourself. Right? There's confirmation that it was sent because then you can forward it to the client from your email and you have a copy, they have a copy. And it's a full fledged professional illustration, okay? So this is how you would submit, you. this is how you run quotes and get illustrations without having a writing number. If the client says, I wanna take the applications, you again, go back to our TKO website, go to our IMO, hit our IMO again. Here you are again, back into the our IMO, agent portal, e-app services. Where does this take you to? I go. Look, you see all these companies right here? You can submit iPipeline, iGo applications for every one of these companies right here. Just you, just going right to this portal without having a writing number. You're going through the Call UMS website and using our iPipeline that's already open for all of our agents who don't have writing numbers. So let's say I wanted to do Foresters. Here I am, I'm logged in, start new case, right? Sample Martinez is the client's name. Uh, 2001, it's a 20 year old. We're doing a male, right? How do I like to name it? Last name, first name, Forrester's client, uh, company, product. That's kind of how I do it. This is a client that lives in Illinois, right? It's a term product, find available products. What pops up? Look at all the companies, but I'm using Foresters. If it's a non-medical, there's my non-medical. If it's a full-fledged medical, there's my full-fledged medical. I'm selling the Your Term product. I'm not selling the Strong Foundation. I don't sell that one. I sell the Your Term product, which has the full living benefits, accidental death benefit. I can do it medical. I can do non-medical. Select, boom, I pipeline opens up. I submit the application. Now, let me ask the class. If I just did that and I don't have a writing number, I ran the quotes using the mobile quick quotes app link. I submitted the application using iPipeline. What are the other things that I need to do before I finish? Anybody know? The transmittal. The transmittal, what else? You have to go to support center and do carrier contracting request. Exactly, those are the two things you always gotta do, right? You could do the new business transmittal right here. And then you gotta make sure you let my licensing team know Right, by going to, where is it, where is it, where is it? Support center, carrier contracting requests. It's almost like a digital way of saying to Sandra, hey Sandra, I just turned in business for, uh, for Foresters. Can you begin contracting for that, please? Can you do that for me, please? Yes, cool, Sandra receives it, Sandra does it, no problem. It's your job to follow up. Please do me a favor and follow up and just make sure that she sends you confirmation that it has begun, okay? Um, and then obviously the new business transmittal form is so my commissions department knows that there's business that you turned in. And we can expect commissions to be coming in shortly. Okay, that's those are the two things you need to do. Let me give you a tip as well too for everybody. If you wanna check to see which companies you're in JIT status, you go right here to writing numbers. You hit writing numbers and you just find your name. Find your name and you can see where you are, what status you're at. So let's say I wanted to find Jennifer Jung. Uh, there's Jennifer, right? Look at this. She's in JIT with North American. Look at this with Allianz, November 5th, we requested contracts. This is what, so we pushed contracting November 5th. We pushed contracting for NLG November 5th. We pushed contracting for NLG annuity November 5th. She's in JIT status with Foresters. She, we pushed contracting November 5th with Anico. She's in JIT with Mutual of Omaha. We push contracting with Americo November 5th. She's in JIT with Aetna. I mean, this is, this is data she has. She now knows where she is with her contracts. If you want to look at your downlines, you can do the same. Like, for example, let's go to right here, Art. Art's in JIT with this company, right? He has a writing number with this company. We're waiting on advisor with this company. Waiting on advisor means we sent him 
the contracting paperwork, but he didn't open up the email and fill out the contracting papers. So we're still waiting. If there's a blank, that means we haven't done anything, right? If you see a number, that means that there's a writing number. Now, I mean, let me give you full disclosure to everybody. This is something that still has to manually be input. So what I'm requesting is everybody to have be patient. Okay, we try to update this every seven days. We try to update it. But if for whatever reason we bring on board an agency, you know, we transfer an agency from an old from another IMO over, and all of a sudden there's 30, 40 agents, it could delay a little bit, you know, for us to update this because this unfortunately is still something that manually gets inputted. But here you can at least get an idea of where you are, right? So if I'm a new agent and I know that I want to turn in foresters, I might at least look here to see if I'm in JIT status so that I could turn the business in. If I'm not, I'm like, hey, just can you do me a favor? Can you check real quick to see if I'm, you know, if I if, if I've already done my foresters paperwork? If not, can you send it to me so I can sign it and, flip, and you know and do it? Because I got some business to turn in. Does that make sense? Or does anybody have any questions? What is the medical and non-medical? <clears throat> yes, who who was asking that question? I apologize. Baylin. Oh, hi, Baylin. Okay, so let me explain what that is. Some insurance companies offer what's called express underwriting, which is typically 100,000 to like 400,000. It, it, it doesn't typically go over that amount. Express underwriting, non-medical, same terminology, just means that they're going to pull your medical records, but they're not going to request a nurse to come to your house and draw blood and take a urine sample. That's what that means, right? So what's okay. the pro and con? What's the pro and con? Pro, it's going to get approved faster. Pro, you know, um, it, it, almost, uh, it almost approves you with one blind eye, right? Because they're not looking at your current blood work, your current medical situation now. It's just looking at your history, right? The con is that you're typically paying more in monthly premium for that type of benefit, and you're going to be limited to how much insurance you can get. That's express underwriting. Right. That's really, let me tell you where I use express non-medical underwriting. I use it for someone that hasn't gone to the doctors in 10 plus years that believes they might have something, right? They, they believe, you know, I don't know, I'm a little bit unhealthy. I'm not exactly sure. I'm kind of worried. All right. If you haven't gone to the doctors in 10 years, let's do express. That's where I would use that. Or if I'm doing a transactional sale, like if I'm meeting with a, someone that, you know, like a tax preparer's office, right? Some, you know, our tax preparer's department did their taxes. That person wants to be in and out really quickly. I'd rather do an express application because express applications can get approved in like five minutes and done. There's no need for underwriting that could take two, three weeks to approve and the client get buyer's remorse or anything like that, right? That's the second route that I would go non-medical. Or the third route that I would go non-medical is if the person's really afraid of needles, and I have clients that are like that. I've got people that are like, you know, it's, it's like a phobia of needles. They prefer not to do a medical exam at all. I go express, right? That's what non-medical means. Medical means, hey, you know, either, either we could approve you without a medical if there's nothing there that triggers it, or we could request a full medical. And if we request a medical, that means a nurse has to come out to your house, draw blood, take a urine sample, ask you some medical questions, get your height and weight, and, you know, we're going to approve everything once we get all those results from the blood work in and such. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So another question, question. Tony. Yes. Um, you know, I did my paperwork prior to me being ill mm -hmm. and I didn't know there was a time frame. So do I need to start all over? What paperwork? like my my licensures going through the different companies no well let's, let's take a look right now Benny, what's your last name bland sochiwa you might not be in here right now right do me a favor yeah i don't see i don't see baleen in the writing numbers report yeah. all right baleen uh, give us give me give me about a day or two no, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to stress Sandra. Give me a week, and your name will be in here, and it'll be updated. Okay. Okay. Um, Christina asked, you know, what does waiting on advisor mean? Christina, waiting on advisor means, like right here, here you are waiting on advisor for Foresters. 
This means that we sent you the Forester's paperwork. We sent you the electronic paperwork to your email using Insurance Bay, and you have not opened it up yet and you know, clicked and electronically signed. So we don't have your paperwork yet. Now, remember, Christina, um, we also started yours a while back, and then obviously things happened and you know, you're, you're re-engaging back with us. So this might be out of date, but that's what waiting on advisor essentially means. I do see requested, requested, requested out of these four carriers. I see a writing number with Anico. I see waiting on advisor with AIG final expense and waiting on advisor with Foresters. So that's what waiting on advisor essentially means. You're the, we, we sent you the email and it's in your inbox, but you haven't opened it up, signed it and sent it back to us. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Could you also, you said you mentioned JIT as well. This is where my connectivity was kind of choppy. Could you um, okay. repeat what that meant again? Yeah. No, no, of course, of course. So JIT stands for just in time. That means that we have received your paperwork. You're not in waiting on advisor status. That means we sent you the paperwork, you opened it up, you signed it, you hit sent, right? And it's now sitting in my licensing team's um, folders and it's in perfect condition, meaning we've looked at your paperwork, it's in good shape. We're waiting now for you to either tell us to submit the contracting paperwork or for a new piece of business to go in so that we could submit the contracting paperwork with the new piece of business. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're very welcome. Anybody have any other questions? Let them know that um, the report hasn't been updated as it used to because it's only Trish. Yeah. So I go by the report and she's not able to yeah. update everything. Yeah. She puts the numbers whenever, she, you know, someone gets the writing number, but she's not able to change like from waiting on advisor to um I got JIT, you. and so it's hard for me to keep it updated because i'm not sure who approves the contract and, and who yeah. doesn't yeah so just like i stated earlier guys you know like i said be flexible with that writing numbers google sheet it's not going to always be up to date there's three people in licensing that sandra's communicating with and those people are the ones that are sending for paperwork they're the ones that are verifying the things are right they're the ones submitting contracting Right now, I'll tell you what's happening out of the three, only one of them is still working because one of them went on medical leave because she, so she had some type of surgery with her shoulder. And the other one, I believe was went on medical leave because of COVID. And so right now that, that department is, is low staffed. So that's why it might not be up to date. Um, but if you know, if you're like, hey, can you check on this? Cause I, I have something that I wanna check on and I don't see it there. You can reach out to Sandra. She'll give you an answer, in, you know, in a day or so, um, because we 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 will know to hone in on that particular need. Okay, cool. Now this cheat sheet, right? Remember, I wrote down the instructions for North American. Guess what? I also did. I wrote the instructions down for Foresters. How to run quotes. How to submit applications. Right. Mutual of Omaha is very similar to Foresters. You can run quotes using the mobile Quick Quotes link. You could submit applications using IGO inside of the call UMS system, right? It's all, it's all, again, it all starts and ends here. So, you know, if you want kind of like a, like a, like a speed class on this, any company in mobile quick quotes, you can run quotes through right here, right? And any company, any company that you see here on IGO, you could submit electronic applications here. Any company, you can submit that, right? It's a simple cheat sheet, right? Let me give you the companies that I know for sure we write a lot of that you cannot run quotes or submit applications because it's either not on IGO or they don't have a quoting system where you can go to without a writing number. These are the ones that you're like, okay, let me highlight these bad ones. American National, you can run quotes using the mobile quick quotes for term and GUL, but the application doesn't use iPipeline. So your only option for American National is to either request the contracts, request the contract numbers, wait for you to get a writing number so you can log into American National and do it electronic or a paper application. Those are your only two choices. Okay, no problem, Jennifer. It's all good. 
Okay. Um, Allianz is the same thing. With Allianz, they only have IULs. So you're not even going to be able to run quotes. You know, you own, and, 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 and they don't use iPipeline. So again, you either have to request the writing numbers. And when you get the writing numbers, when you get the writing numbers, you can log into Allianz and submit an, an electronic application, or you're going to need a paper application, right? Allianz. So Anico Allianz, Oxford, which is a final expense company, you can, you can run quotes on the mobile quick quotes link, but the application part of it, you either need a writing number or you, knew you need to do a paper application, right? So there's, there's, there's Anico, there's Oxford, there's Allianz. Those are three big companies that we write, okay? Now, if you need um, illustrations or paper applications, what you're gonna do is, this is the Call UMS website, callums.com, which is our IMO. Here's the phone numbers. Save those numbers. It's Eastern Standard Time. They're in Jersey. They work Monday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. The person you're gonna ask to speak with his name is John Countryman. He's the only male in the office, just so you guys know. John Countryman. He's the individual that will get you illustrations on companies that you can't get your own illustrations on, paper applications on companies you don't have writing numbers on. He's also the individual you can call and brainstorm with and say, hey, I've got a particular case. Here's what I got going on. What company do you recommend that I use? Like, he's that guy. Let me give you some tips, though, when working with John. Number one. I don't want an agent without experience to be communicating directly with John without a field trainer with him. Because John is not there to give people a, a 101 of insurance. He's there to run quotes. You've got to be able to communicate with him. Hey, John, here's what I'm looking for. Here's what I need. What do you recommend? Or, hey, can you do it this way, that way, and the other? It's not for a brand new agent to just call directly. A brand new agent should work with a certified field trainer and then two together should call John, number one. Number two, please don't call John if you need the illustration right now. You've got to give him at least 24 hours to get the illustration to you because you don't know what his workload is like. You don't know what other agents he's working with. I mean, it's just, it's a very difficult thing to request him to get you something right away. But John is your guy for illustrations, for paper applications, okay? Any questions about working with John and how that works? No? Okay. Good. Remember, uh, I created... Yeah. Yes. Go for it. Question for John. Uh, is he... Uh, is just life or annuities or, or it just... Yeah, he's life. He's life insurance. Annuities is Donna. Donna McLaughlin is, is your annuity specialist. And here's... And this is something pretty cool. Let me... Let me show this so you guys can, like, if you want to kind of, you know, learn on your own as well. Again, everything starts in our TKO website. You can go right here to our IMO. Where is it again? Here it is, our IMO. You click about our IMO and what opens up is a little PowerPoint. And you can, you know, learn about the company. This is Mary Ann Lacey. She's the owner of the IMO. She's the one that gave us this phenomenal opportunity, right? This is Maureen, life department manager, Neelam. You work with Neelam with anything that has to do with high risk. So if you have a client that has a lot of medical issues and you just don't know which company to go to, you call her, she'll ask you questions about their medical condition, maybe even send you a form to fill out, but then she'll shop out the whole market for you. She'll send you back a report and letting you know, this is what each company said and this is what rating they recommend you apply the business at. That's Neelam. John is your life sales development guy. He's your illustrations, right? Trisha and Eileen are contracting. You do not, you can't, you, the only people that Trisha and Eileen talk to is Sandra. So for all intents and purposes, Sandra is the person you go to for licensing. She communicates with them, right? Donna is your annuity specialist. I love Donna. I work with Donna heavily, heavily. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't even run my own annuity illustrations. I call her up. I tell her, here's what I got. Here's what I got going on. What do you recommend? She'll make a recommendation. She'll email you the illustration. She'll role play it with you. If you have an annuity you're competing against, she'll help you break that annuity up into pieces. 
tell you where the pros and cons are. She'll even get into a Zoom meeting with you and your client and help you close the deal. She'll help you submit the application, scrub it for you, and then she'll help you in underwriting if need be. Like her and her team are solid, 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 solid team, I tell you right now, okay? These are the people you work with, okay? Um, let me tell you the companies from a contracting standpoint that you won't be going through our IMO and you have to make the request through Sandra, okay? Silac annuities, it's an invitation directly from Silac that Sandra will send you. Silac will be directly there. Up and coming companies that you won't use the normal SureLC portal, you'll, you'll receive a direct link from. Outside of health, health is Rob. Everybody knows that health insurance, you go right to Rob Raw, he helps you with that. But life insurance companies, right? Prosperity, American Amicable, those two companies, you're gonna, you're gonna go through Sandra and there's gonna be a different link sent to you to begin contracting for that. That's not done through, that's not done through UMS, our IMO, okay? Those two companies, Prosperity American Amicable, are not companies that John Countryman can run illustrations for. John Countryman can give you quotes on that. That's not, that's not, that's not for that. Does that make sense? Okay, good, good. Okay. You know, if I'm talking to a brand new agent, I would tell you this. Because a lot of people say, well, there's a lot of companies. Which ones do I use, right? For term insurance, I would be using Anico, American National, North American, my primaries. If I'm going simplified, right, quick turnaround, quick approval, I'm going Foresters and I'm going Americo. Boom. I'm, I'm, I can even go Mutual of Omaha for, for simplified term, right? If I'm going final expense, I'm going Americo or I'm going Oxford or I'm going Foresters or Mutual of Omaha. And here's just crazy. Americo, Oxford, Mutual of Omaha, and Foresters all have links on the mobile quick quotes tab where you can run quotes. I'm going, I'm going one of those four. Tip for you, tip. Um, somebody just wrote something here. Hang on one second. Just a heads up, North American is missing a living benefit on the term in California. 100% right. That is 100% true. Um, the company you would use for California would be Anico, American National, okay, um, for California and for New York. I would be using American National for if you want to make sure you get all the living benefits, okay. Lucia asked, what is simplified? Simplified is the same thing as saying non-medical, is the same thing as saying express, just kind of depends where in the industry you learned about that, but it simplified just means quick underwriting that will not require a full-fledged medical exam, they're going to approve it or decline it based on what they see in the history. That makes sense, Lucia? Okay. So like I said, fully underwritten term, I'm going American National, I'm going North American. Um, if I'm dealing with non-residents, non-resident aliens, DACA recipients, anything in that capacity, I'm doing NLG. They're the best for that. Or Prudential. Prudential has a really good platform for um, non-resident and DACA recipients, okay? Prudential, you need to know, does not advance commission. They pay you on a monthly as earns. So does Nationwide. Those are the only two companies that across the board, they will never advance your commissions. They'll pay you as earns or, um, or unless the client pays annual, then they'll advance you, okay? Um, so we talked about what company for term, what company for simplified term. Final expense, like I said, Americo, um, Americo, Oxford, Foresters, Mutual of Omaha. Let me tell you why I would go one route over the other, right? Just so you know, kind of like the pros and cons. Americo is a direct to carrier contract for everybody. Okay. Hang on. Lucia asked the question Who are the companies for simplified company? Okay. So simplified term is either simplified term insurance. Okay. Is I, I would either pick Foresters, simplified term, Mutual of Omaha, simplified term or Americo simplified term. 
America is probably the first route that I would go. They're a little bit more pricey than the other two, but they have a product that I really like called continuation, which is a 30 year term or a 20 year term. And after that term period expires, 10% of the insurance remains as a final expense. So if you get like a $300,000 term with Americo, after the 30 years expires, you'll have 30,000 left over as a final expense policy. I like that a lot, to be honest with you. And it has living benefits. That's what I would be doing for Simplified. For final expense, Americo, Foresters, Mutual of Omaha, or Oxford. Americo is a direct-to-carrier company for everybody, whether you're brand new or you're a veteran, across the board. So Americo pays daily, approves in five minutes. However, the problem with Americo is they tend to be a little bit more overpriced than all the rest. Oxford happens to probably be the best priced for final expense, but they're also the most difficult in underwriting to approve. But they have a similar system to, to Americo, five minute approval, electronic application, next day pay, that kind of cool stuff, right? Foresters has probably the best benefits for just having a policy with them. They have what's called member benefits, which you need to, you know, that's probably a different training to learn about Foresters member benefits. Um, Mutual of Omaha has a good final expense as well. Forrester's final expense has ratings. You can get, you know, it's not an approve or decline. There's different stages to the pricing, which is kind of cool as well for Forrester's. That's what I would do for final expense. For IULs, if we're thinking IUL cash accumulation, that's the focus, right? Because remember, IUL does cash accumulation, but it also does... Um, death benefit and living benefits, right? But if you're focused more on cash accumulation, 100% would be Allianz. They're probably the best in cash accumulation. Second to that would be North American. North American has a great cash accumulation um, policy. Under that would be American National. Under that would be NLG for cash accumulation purposes. If we're thinking benefits, not cash accumulation, but benefits, I would go North, uh, I would do NLG. NLG probably best uh, living benefits in the market space, but they have the highest cost of insurance, but that's what that's why the cost of insurance is high. You're paying for those benefits. That's why the cash accumulation isn't as high. Under that would be American National. Under that would be Anna, uh, North American. Under that would be Allianz, right? Now, me, you say, well, Tony, well, how, how do you do it then, right? What if I want the best of the best? The thing you need to understand about IULs is Yes, IULs have death benefit, living benefits, cash accumulation, but it won't do all three for you. It won't do all three at the same time. So if you get a policy and you overfund it for cash accumulation, and then you have a living benefit need and you use up 70, 80% of your money for living benefit, don't expect the cash accumulation to do much for your retirement. Don't expect the death benefit, right? Like you got to pick what you want that money to do, right? So yeah, so how I like to design it, I'll tell you right now, I'm very big on Allianz for cash accumulation. And then what I do is I offset it with an American national term policy because of their living benefits, right? And I, I'll even pick up a critical illness policy, a standalone critical illness policy, either through Mutual of Omaha or National General because, because Allianz's IUL does not have critical illness living benefit. So the only way you can get that is either getting the anical term, which I like to get that too, but I also, if the person has enough of a budget, I'll attach a standalone critical illness from Mutual of Omaha or National General because the term policy after the 30-year period expires is gone, the standalone critical illness will still remain. So that's, that's my version of creating a bulletproof scenario for the client where they get the best cash accumulation while still having living benefits and death benefit. That's just me. And, and full disclosure is how I have my policy set up. I have an Allianz IUL, I have an anical term, I have critical illness through Nat, through Nat Gen. I mean, it's, it, it works for me um, and it's a good solution. That's just, again, me. Cool. National General, you have to be health licensed to get contracted, so reach out to Rob Raw for that. Mutual of Omaha, you have to have the health license to sell the critical illness policies as well too. So, you know, Mutual of Omaha, you go through Sandra, National General, you go through Rob. I'm recording this because I'm expecting people to be able to go, what was it that Tony said about this? Let me go back to the video instead of text messaging everybody, you know, <laughs> something that I could find on my own, okay? So we talked about term companies, 
simplify, we talked about final expansion, we talked about IUL. GULs, Guaranteed Universal Life, two companies, American National and North American, hands down. American National and North American. If a company, if a client wants an IUL simplified, right? Believe it or not, Mutual of Omaha has an express IUL. They're the only express IUL in the market space that I can think of that'll go over 250,000. Um, Mutual of Omaha and Mutual of Omaha's IUL Express has a return of premium writer in their illustration. It's pretty, it's a guaranteed return of premium, which gives the client that peace of mind of knowing, hey, if this IUL isn't performing the way it can, I can get a full refund of all my money back. Okay. That, that, so again, I'm just kind of giving you, you know, because that's one of the biggest questions people ask me, what company would you use for this? What company would you use for that? I just, I just gave you what I would use, right? Um, SBLI, Savings Bank Life Insurance. You can run quotes using their mobile quote system. You can submit application using iPipeline. What is SBLI known for? $750,000 of term life insurance with a guarantee that they will not request a medical exam. But the pricing will be at a preferred rating instead of a simplified rating. Remember, simplified rating doesn't request a medical, but you're paying them more money. SBLI will actually give you lower pricing. So the prices are very competitive to a fully underwritten uh, term policy. And they'll go as high as 750000 and guarantee you that they won't request a medical. Okay. Now, a couple of things you need to know about SBLI. If the person's been declined within the last year, don't even go SBLI. Don't. Okay. Um, if the person, uh, their term policy does not have critical illness, so it has chronic and terminal, but it doesn't have critical. So that's where you attach like a mutual of Omaha critical or a national general critical, right? Um, that's what I would use with the SBLI. SBLI, this is the part that you need to be good about. It's an electronic application, but the medical questionnaire needs to be done by phone interview. So you need to prep your client for that phone interview, what to say, what not to say. You don't want to tell them to lie but you also don't want them to over-exaggerate things that they thought they had, but they never actually had it. Like you don't want a client to say, well, at one point I thought I had cancer or at one point I thought I was having a heart attack. And then I went to the doctor and I figured out it was just acid reflux. Like, wait, don't say that. If they ask you, if you ever had a heart attack, you say no. Okay. If you never were actually diagnosed with a heart attack, you say no. You don't say you thought you had it. No, 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 no. That's red flags. So you got to prep them for that. And it's a phone interview. So they got to know that the underwriter is going to call them I think up until eight o'clock at night, um, you know, and you got to prep them for that. Otherwise the application doesn't push through. Okay. Um, Caleb had a question here. I don't know the name of North Americans IUL, but their death benefit focused IUL should also include ROP standard. That would probably be their protector plan, Caleb. And you're right. I, I, I don't know too much about it. They have the builder IUL, which is cash accumulation. Then they have the protector, which is more, death benefit focus and i do believe it does have an rop on it as well so right you're, you're right you're right um guys no lie no lie just being honest with you here Allianz north american two iul companies that are cream of the crop best of the best best of the best of the best these are like wealth management type companies these are not product these are not companies that joe schmoes have north american for example if you've got you know, credit issues in your background, they won't contract you. They're the most difficult company to get contracted with. So if you can get a contract with North America, you can get a contract with everybody. Allianz requires $50,000 minimum of income from the insured. Otherwise, they won't even approve you. They won't even look at you. Okay. Belin asks, uh, have to hop off, no problem. Um, kid IULs, right? That's a big question people ask. Which one company use for kid IULs? I would use North American or American National. That's who I would use. Why? Because both those companies have a writer called a guaranteed insurability writer, GIR, which basically means that the child can purchase more insurance in the future as an adult, typically six different times, so six different occasions in their life, broken up amongst a three-year separation, right? So it's like 21, 20. It's like 21, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 20, 20, 21, 24, 27, 30, like every three years, they can buy more insurance at the health that they are today. So if their health changes in the future, they'll still be able to get more coverage. 
each time is anywhere from 25 to 50,000. Those are the only two companies. Um, I'm lying. There's three companies that offer that GIR rider. It's North American, American National, and NLG. One, two, three. Where do I use NLG? I'll tell you, I don't use NLG a lot on cash accumulation. I use NLG a lot when the client's more focused on the living benefit side of it, or if the client is a non-resident or DACA recipient, because unfortunately that's the only path that we can take. And I listen, NLG, very powerful company, very strong company, very, very strong company. I'm just telling you where I use it and where I don't. If I have the option of using Allianz's IUL, I'm going to. If I have the option of using North American's IUL, I'm going to. It's, it's, it, I mean, they're just badass companies, amazing companies to work with. Um, any more questions? Some of you might ask, you know, why don't you use Allianz for the kid IULs? I'll get your girls, I'll get you right now. Um, I don't use Allianz for the kid IULs because unfortunately Allianz doesn't offer the guaranteed insurability rider for kids. So that's just my preference. Uh, it's the way that I kind of see it, but it, you can, if you want. Gerzo, you had a question, go ahead and unmute yourself, bud, and ask away. Can you, can you repeat those three uh, companies for the kid IULs? North American, said, mm -hmm. American National, and uh, National Life Group, NLG. Right? Okay. If you want to sell whole life, like kid whole life policies, Foresters, Foresters as a a decent kid whole life policy with a guaranteed insurability rider as well, right? But that that's, you know, whole life. Yeah, now you're dealing more with the old school market that, you know, they want a little bit more of that conservativeness. Um, whole life is a very big selling product in the Haitian community. I'll tell you that, um, you know, that that's where I, I lean on that. For that, Tony, a mutual Omaha and a foresters will be for good for grandparents, right? Where they don't need the parent signature. Final expense, yeah, and, and and correct, and they don't need they don't need parent signature with foresters and mutual of Omaha for the whole life kid policies, correct? <clears throat> correct. Any other questions? Okay. So here's the biggest thing I want a new agent to know about this video that I just gave you. We went into a lot of other little tips and stuff, but the biggest thing is this. Know what applications, what applications you could submit with iPipeline. Know what those are. Know what quotes you can run using the mobile quick quotes. Know which ones those are. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you one more tool that you can use, and then we're gonna finish off. And this is a quoting system that I love when I can't use some of the resources that I just showed you. If you go to our IMO, again, go into the call UMS portal and you're logged in. You can go right here to agent portal and you can do agency life quotes. This opens up a one-stop shop illustration software right here. Look how cool this is. Let's pretend, um, let's use Gerzo as an example. Um, let's say I'm meeting with a client and his name is Gerzo. Come on now. Why can't I type? Wake up. There you go. Okay. Gerzo Mendez. And his date of birth is November 16th, 1984. He's a male, non tobacco user. He lives in Florida. Let's say you have a conversation with him and you're like, I want to run him some quotes, but I don't know. He might be preferred. He might be standard. You know, you do, you know, an analysis, you find out you want to quote them for a term product. There's a 30 year term, but you also want to quote them for a GUL. This quoting system will let you do term and GULs only. It won't give you IUL illustrations. It'll give you IUL pricing. A GUL, let's say to age 100, right there, right? Um, so now I've got a 30 year quote. I got a term to age, to, I got a GUL to age 100 quote. Let's say I want to give him a quote and I'm thinking about using, um, I don't know, let's go American National, let's go North American, and let's go Foresters, right? Look how many companies I can select from, a lot of them. And you see all the parameters I'm creating? And I created two different ratings, two different products, three different companies. 
Now let's do 500,000. Let's also do 750,000. I can put my credentials here. You know, put my email, put my phone number, put my license number if I want to. I don't have to do all this, I'm just showing you. I can then hit this run quotes button. Look how cool this is. It runs the quotes for every company. Like here's my 30 year, here's my to age 100. Here's 500,000, 500,000, 500,000 for each company. Here's 750 for each company, 750. Here's 500, your standard rating, preferred rating. Like they're all here. All the quotes that I requested are all here. This is my GUO quotes, right? Notice Forrester's is not here because Forrester's doesn't offer GUOs. So it only ran me North American and American National. Here's what's cool. I can select which one I want to show them. Maybe I don't want to show them everything because it's too much, too much info. Maybe I want to show them Forrester's, North American. And then for the, for the GUL, I want to show American National and North American here, whatever. When I have them all, I can do share. Look how you can send it to them. You can download it, you can email it, or you can text message it. I really like that. Let's hit text message. Come on now, come back to me. Oh, oh, oh wait, I know why I did it. Hang on, sorry. Share it, text message. When I text it, I can pick what type of format do I want the illustration? Do I want a detailed version, a condensed version? Do I want a comparison based on features? Do I want a comparison based on price? If I pick a detailed one, next. Let's just say that I can now personalize my message. I can now say, Gerzo, see you at the next 5K. I'm gonna write that down because he and I were supposed to run a 5K recently and we did it, but we will, I promise. But again, I, I can personalize my message to him. And then I can say, hey, give me your phone number, Gerzo. Gerzo, give me your number. Uh, no, you're muted. Unmute yourself, bud. 239-651-8537. But don't call me. Can I, I'm going to text you right now. Can I text you? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let me know if you got the text message. It says successful. Did you get a text message? Yes, indeed. You did, it right? Says, yeah, 5K. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, instant. The text message with the personalized message and everything? Now, if I hit this yeah. new PDF. Uh, see you at the next one. Okay. <laughs> right? Oh, okay. Pretty cool, right? Let yeah. Me, cool. Um, let me see here. Am I sharing screen? Are you guys able to, are you, were you guys seeing my yeah. screen while I was doing all of that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, good. we can see. Okay, yeah, we good. Can see this PDF is what he just received. And this PDF that he just received this is the, the link, the hyperlink. So if you copy this hyperlink and you email it to yourself or you put it on a note, you can always open up that hyperlink and content, send it to him. Be like, hey, what do you think about the quotes I sent you? You know, he, he's got the link, you've got the link. When he decides, hey, I want to take action, cool. We're going to do Foresters for, you know, $80.94. This particular product, right, preferred 500000 You now know how you can go to iPipeline and submit the application. But there's the thing right there, right? Um, let me try this one more time as well. Because I did this last week with Caleb and it wasn't working. Caleb, you want to give me your number, bro? Area code 925 699 4085. Give him a little message. Welcome to Utah. <laughs> Send. Let me know if you got it, bud. Success. Did you get a text message? Um, let's see here. If you don't get it, it's something with your phone. Last week you were having issues with that. <laughs> We just confirmed it did go to Gerzo's. <laughs> of 
All right, must be something wrong with my thumb. Might be, yeah, because. So anyways, guys, this is the software you guys could use, right? It's pretty cool. Let me show you a couple other things about the software. If you, let me go back to the, let me see here, what is this? Let me see here. What's the premium product, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if I go to new quote, it opens up. You can do a needs analysis right here. Calculate needs. You click calculate needs, look what it does. That you add in person's debts, expenses, you know, how many kids do they have? What's their annual income? And it'll calculate what their insurance needs are. So you can base the amount of insurance you're applying them for based on this. Or you could do a very simple dime analysis, which we train on that all the time. But this is a way for you to also do a needs analysis as well um, that you can leverage, right? So this software is pretty cool. It gives you that ability to run a lot of different quotes, a lot of different formats, a lot of different ways. Just understand this software does term and GUL. It won't do final expense. It won't do, it'll do IUL prices. It'll show how much the IUL costs, but it will not do a full illustration to show the schedule and everything like that. There's only one company without any writing numbers that you can get full IUL illustrations on your own. Which one is it? Anybody remember? National General? No, National. North, North American. North American. <laughs> That's okay. North American. That's right. All the other companies, you need a writing number so you can log into the carrier to do it. Or you can call John Countryman and he'll, he'll, he'll get those for you. Anybody have any questions about that? Good, good, good. All right. You guys have officially gone through orientation part two. And now we know you've got your contracting done. We know that you know how to submit business. You know how to request your contracts. And you know about the new business transmittals. Those are huge for you. You also know how to find your writing numbers or at least what the status is of your writing numbers. So I'm not going to tell you that, you know, if you don't have any other questions, reach out. I want you to reach out. Reach out to your upline VPs. Reach out to me. I'll gladly help you out. Um, when you do submit business, you know, don't be afraid to work with a field trainer. It's going to be beneficial for you. Um, everything that I trained on today is more for that new agent that doesn't have a writing number. Once you guys get your writing numbers, it's irrelevant, right? You can log in directly to the website for each company, run quotes, submit apps, do everything. You'll still need to always do a new business transmittal. No matter what, that's a, that's a must. But this at least lets an agent who just came on board go out to the field right away, run quotes, meet with clients, submit applications, and now feel like they're slowing their business down. That, that, that's really what all this is about, okay? I'm going to be running a premium financing class, okay? So what, what is premium financing? Premium financing is a wealth management technique where you're leveraging an IUL company. We have two that do this. NLG, National Life Group, and Allianz. Those are the two where they're leveraging a bank to loan them money that it's, that, and that money is going to be used to, to overfund the client's IULs. So imagine this scenario for those of you who know IULs, right? Imagine this. You put in 25 grand every year for five years into an IUL, right? The, a bank puts puts three times the amount of money you put in, right? So if you put in 25 grand for five years, that's 125,000, right? So 125,000 times three is 375,000. So you put in 25,000 for five years, the bank puts in 375,000 of their money into your IUL. Now you're earning that index, that six to 8%, you're earning that not on your money, not on their money, on both. You're earning that on both for 15 years. And then on the 15th year, you have to pay back the bank that loaned you that money. You got to pay back the money that they loaned you plus a small 2% interest. But you get to keep all the rest of the interest that you made in your own account. Or you pay it back, but not from the money in the IUL. You pay it back from another asset. That way your IUL ne never did withdrawals because you know you like the way that it's growing. I mean, what happens to IULs when you put that kind of money in, it's enormous. 
It's enormous. This is this is leveraging bank money to the to the tenth power. Because if you think about it, if the bank is charging you two percent to borrow their money, but you're earning six to eight percent out of their own money, who's winning? You are. That's what and that's what a premium financing IUL does. But it's 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 got its restrictions. It's this is for people that could put in twenty five thousand dollars a year for at least five years. This is for people that are making a six figure income. Okay, they can validate that they're making a six figure income because underwriting is a little bit different. Commissions are ridiculous on products like this. And it's not just on year one. Commissions are like for five straight years type stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. If you're in that market space, that's something that you guys are going to want to learn. It requires, again, it requires a trust company. There has to be a third party trust company. We have one that's ready to work with us. It requires an, an IUL company that's ready to do premium financing. We have two of them that's ready to do it. And it requires your ability to want to learn about it so that you can then find the right people that can qualify for this, right? Start hanging out with rich people, 100%. This is how the rich leverage the bank's money to make money. That's its truth. So if you came to today's training, you're going to be invited to that private, to that premium financing class as long as you finish your new associate checklist. This is part of the new associate checklist. Okay, let me let me show you real quick how to get access to that checklist and we're gonna finish here. Again, everything starts and ends in our website. You go to orientation. There's your checklist. So take a look at it and see what do you have left? Are you on Voxer's team chat? If you're not, Licensed yet? Have you registered for pre-licensing and scheduled your state exam? If you are licensed, did you finish contracting? Are you in JIT status? Have you done orientation part one where you take a look, you know, you sat, you looked at the back office, you looked at the compensation grid, you learned how to get promotions, right? Do you know how to get access to our TKO schedule so you can see our weekly trainings? Have you done your own financial needs analysis? Right? Have you actually sat with your upline and done an analysis on yourself and determined what type of insurance it is you need? Have you put together your own top 25 list or made a decision to buy your first batch of leads? Have you done your orientation part two, which is what we just did now, guys? So everybody here, congratulations, you finished orientation part two. And did you attend the latest closers college? If you finish that list, you're invited to do premium financing training with me. And I'll be putting together the date here shortly. And I will be expecting to see verification of all of these things done for anybody that attends that class, because that is that's high level sales. That's, you know, that's that's fifteen, twenty thousand dollar type commissions per per client type sales. So have a good one. Be blessed. I'm going to stay on for another couple of minutes in case you guys have any other questions. Um, but, uh, you know, let's let's go out there. Let's go kill. It. Let's take over to twenty twenty two and. And, and build ourselves an empire for our families.